Okay, guys, uh, this session is actually about Google Tools uh, and Google Docs in particular. Uh, if you're following along, you may be on a uh, website. This is the link to the website that actually goes along with this video. So if I'm going too fast or too slow, you can go further through it. Uh, this one allows you to actually you know, click, click, click through it as opposed to watching this video later on that's on the uh, school's video in-service V drive where you'd have to actually fast forward and forward audibly. You know. Either way, it works fine. Uh, also, at the end of it, I also have my email on there in case you want to get in touch with me and ask more questions. All right, or you may have found something new, and uh, by all means, please share it with me. <clears throat> First one uh, I'm going to talk about today is it's an old tool that's been made new again. All right, that's why it's, it's called Explorer Tool, a.k.a. Research Tool. Inside your Google Docs, you used to actually have a research tool, uh, which basically went under your Google Docs, moved over uh, to the tab marked Tools, went down, and it would say Research. Now that thing's actually gone, and it says uh, Explorer Tool. Now, under that one, if you um, click on it, all right, uh, you can also click on it from the toolbar area or that also actually shows up at the bottom right hand corner of your screen if you have to have a document open and we'll get to that and show you what all that stuff's about. It's also available in Google Slides. The research tool, the re if you go under uh, highlight something with that, it will actually, uh, and then click on it, it will do this, actually. All right? <coughs> Sorry, did not know that actually the, the typing was actually going to be so dug on tiny because it looks much bigger on my screen. But this projected screen actually looks a little bit weird. That's why the, the effect, like I said. <coughs> if you open up a document, and you know, like a Google Doc, at the bottom uh, right hand, you'll see the explore symbol. See the one on my screen up there is actually highlighted right here. All right, it'll look just like this guy. Once you actually hover over it, if you are uh, not on it, it will actually slide back and reduce down to just this visible icon and turn a light gray, meaning that it's still there, but it's not like in your face. Like you, you um, kind of puts it in the background a little bit. <coughs> In it though, uh, the topics of research, all right, research, oops, excuse me, is you have uh, topics, you have images, and uh, related searches. If I go through that, all right, there's a bunch of different things that it can actually do as far as um, assisting you with further in depth information, along with uh, citation help giving you access to correct citation in MLA, APA, and Chicago. If you go up into that previous Explorer window, which you'll see is right up here, all right, the little uh, magnifying glass, if you click on it and type in what you want, all right, we'll show up here, type in the word Explore, all right, it'll give me web results. Now, all the web results will usually have uh, something next to it for, uh, along with its uh, IP address, or excuse me, its uh, web address, and you can bring that into it, all or, or if you click on this little icon here, it's one you might be used to actually in Chrome as a settings tool. If you click on it, it'll actually give you options all right, when you go to use it as a citation, and you can pick them from the MLA, APA, or Chicago. It will actually 
when you do this, and for whatever particular uh, book that's online or uh, article, uh, encyclopedia, whatever it is that you happen to actually choose, it will actually automatically add it to wherever you are in your document. If you happen to actually be typing along and you plan on using uh, a particular reference, it will add it as a footnote. Now, if you're doing a uh, works cited page, all right, then you'll have to actually take it out of the footnote and then move it to that one. But I would suggest if you're going to do that, you probably want to wait until you're at the end of the document anyways to move it all at one time. But it's, it's uh, very effective, actually. You can um, get images from it. All right, in the image area, all right, same thing. Uh, it was the same search as before. I just clicked over and went on images. There are loads of different images that you can actually pick from. Once you've decided that there's uh, one that you want and you want to bring it into your document, a little plus sign will actually show up in the right hand, upper right hand corner of the image. When you click on it, it will bring it over into your document at the size that it was actually saved at, which then you can actually resize it just as easily as any other picture, you click on it and drag the corner to wherever you want. It also brings with it um, the citation. So you can tell uh, when someone goes through your document, they'll know exactly where you got that information from. Along with that too, is if you are actually um, bringing stuff into your document and it may be something that you've already actually covered somewhere. All right, um, in a previous document or PowerPoint or something, you know, sorry, uh, Google Slide or something like that, anything that happens to be in your drive that may be related to that particular matter, it will also come through and then you can actually go through your drive and bring that stuff in as well. Um, this one's, you know, it's pretty nice, especially when, you know, dealing with uh, citations and trying to get the right form with it. Um, I actually just used this this weekend for a term paper that my son's actually doing. You know, and they basically had to have the works cited page popped up. I said if you went through this, I was like all the different web sources that you actually use, you're guaranteed that it's in the correct style that you actually need. And you know, it could save um, a good bit of time. One thing that is also new um, is voice typing. Voice typing can actually be beneficial, you know, for a whole number of reasons. Uh, if you were actually, you know, practicing a speech or something along those lines, or your typing is not as strong as it could be, or you have a, somebody with a disability, you know. Uh, it's not a, exactly perfect, all right? It requires you to actually have a microphone, all right? Teachers can also use it uh, to comment to students, uh, work directly actually in the document with other programs that are also available as extensions. You could actually just use it as a rough draft for a paper. All you actually have to do in it, oops, excuse me, is inside your uh, tools bar um, in your document, go up to tools, click on it, drag down and you'll actually uh, see voice typing there, click on it. Little microphone will show up on the left hand side, click it, start talking and it starts recording. There is a limitation if you talk as fast as like Brian does. All right, it, it may not actually get everything he says. So if you talk as slow as I do, usually doesn't have a problem. Um, I think the more people actually use it, um, more accustomed you will become to actually speaking at the correct rate of speed in which you can actually handle. But it does pretty well. If I were to actually have a, uh, you know, a Google Doc open and uh, use it for you guys, <laughs> just uh, just about everything. Now the problem is, is that if I'm doing it in presenter mode like this, will it actually pick up what I'm saying and type it as well? This sucker fell apart on the guy at, uh, at E2, 
tech and uh, like will it, uh, will it pick up bad words? Uh, I have not tried that as of yet. But if I was on here and I, and I went into the tools area, went down to voice typing, you go ahead and click this. If it's actually going to pick up the stuff that I'm typing, you can see now this one's actually working well. Now, just because I'm actually also recording this, you know, through a video, I'm probably not going to put any bad words up per se. You, you know, I haven't tried that. New line. New line. New line. Two thirds plus three quarters. Yeah. Doesn't actually want to put the plus sign in, unfortunately. As you can see, like this is muddled up a little bit. There are new actual features in Chrome that I have not used uh, that is based for teachers with math, the, uh, like new formula bars. I haven't actually used it yet. I just happened to see it the other day. And I thought it was kind of interesting, but unfortunately nobody, nobody was doing anything on it. Now, I don't know if it's that new that nobody has enough background in it to give it to anybody, but I, I do know that that thing's out there. Yeah. Voice typing would be kind of nice in that, in that aspect. Collaboration and sharing, this is probably the one of the best features, I, I should say, that's actually available. Many of us actually already use this, although a lot of people don't know all the stuff that you can actually share with it. And it's because that they've uh, printed things out, uh, multiple copies. I have a copier in my, I have a printer in my room, so I actually get to see a lot more stuff than I actually need to see as far as things that get left on here that probably shouldn't get left on here. But you can do this with any, th any document, actually. It doesn't necessarily have to be a uh, Google Doc in a sense of like a Google Doc or a slideshow or something like that. And all you'd actually really have to do is whatever document that you're working on, you can turn it into a PDF and actually share it with people. Um, much in the way that uh, Brian did with the itinerary for today, all right, and the schedule. It's a PDF that you can, you know, share out with people. So it's something that nobody can actually manipulate, all right, but they can still get to see what it's actually on there. And if you have important documents um, like IEPs or something like that and you wanted to, all you have to do is, is take the document that's right in front of you, click print, uh, switch your uh, printer output to a Adobe PDF or a Microsoft print <coughs> or, or basically any other kind. There's a cute PDF writer and stuff like that. You click it to that and it will save it in um, your documents right? and bring it out, pull it and dump it right into your drive. Then you can actually click on the share button, which is in here. Is it, you add the PDF to your drive. Uh, and now the drive's so easy, all you have to do is drag and dump. Thing pops up there. Makes it really easy. You click on the share button, which is under the file. Again, under file. And click the share option. Once you're under the share option, you can actually type in people's names. Or if you've actually set it up ahead of time, you may actually have individual groups. Let's just say that's a you know, high school math group, and there's these select people who you always want to send stuff to, or the social studies group, you know, something along those lines, that group can be in there, and you can instantly give them access to it. You could actually do, like, this video is being done, shared with all of Trail by actually clicking on a link button up here that will actually make it so that it's a link that people go to and can view it but can't manipulate it, as in change stuff that's on, they can't edit the thing and that they actually have to be from trail in order to see it. Once you've actually selected that, you can actually then go and, you know, like I said, change the different particular settings on it so that you can either uh, have it so they have full access editing, they can comment, or they can just view. 
then you can actually go to these ones, which are probably best used if you're sharing stuff with students, all right, and you want them to uh, view it, but not, not necessarily download it or print it or make copies of it, all right. Th this is the area that you can actually do that in, all right. Oh, I want to back up a little bit. The people that you've invited to share to, if you have um, a group of kids that belongs to a specific class, Let's just say that you're doing a complete seniors class or you're doing, you know, just a sixth grader class. You can actually just use their graduation year number on it. Or you could actually use a specific class designation. Let's say that these 30 kids you have in, you know, um, Algebra 2. They're the only one. And, and if you set up a group like that, it'll go just straight to them, you know, and nobody else and you can give them different types of access to the particular document. You don't really usually have to worry too much if you give them an editing uh, power over it, because any document that you actually give to anybody to edit on, you have the original version saved um, automatically. So you can always um, take things back to the very beginning. And it keeps a log of who's making changes on it. So you never have to worry about someone going, I, I didn't do that. Yeah, you did. It's logged right here. You did it at 9.15, you know, last Tuesday. So that's, that's one of the nice aspects of it. Uh, once you are done, you hit finish. I was like, are you actually finished? Kind of. All right. The next thing that comes up is sending a notification. Because if you're sharing it with somebody, it'd be a good idea to let them know that it's coming to them. All right. Because it also just automatically dumps it in their shared with me folder in their drive. And they may not know it's actually there. You can actually add a message to it about, hey, I just shared such and such with you. You can do this or whatever. All right. You can also send a copy to yourself. All right. And you can paste it actually in the email, but if it's a uh, if it's a drive document, you know, a uh, regular Google document, there's really not a need to do that. Once you've completely done with that, and let's say that you are sharing along and working on different stuff, and you want to send a message to <coughs> somebody in it uh, that's outside the document, meaning that you don't necessarily need to have the stuff show up in it um, in the comment area, you can actually email collaborators, and that list of people that you've granted access to, if you click on it, it will automatically generate an email with all those people's names on it. Now, in file sharing, all right, uh, good places to actually be able to use this stuff is in areas like TBTs, BLTs, uh, IEPs. Uh, there's a whole host of documents that you actually want to share with other people in different types of groups, all right, but you don't necessarily, um, you know, want everybody having access to, and you get to share on um, saving paper, uh, which is a big one, uh, especially with price and storage and all that good stuff. So file sharing is really, really good. I, you know, wish that everybody would actually do it because um, when you get something printed out and it's laid on your desk, and then you have to put it in a file and this and the other, and you lose it. If you're me, all right, I hate having paper, uh, you know, given to me because I, I lose it. Um, not because I, I don't care. <laughs> it's just the way it works. Now, the comment tool that you guys actually have, uh, this one has been there for a good long time, and you guys have most likely actually seen it in uh, Moodle in the past. Let's uh, come back to our little tiny um, practice screen here. I'm going to pop this one back up for you guys. Uh, this stuff that we've actually had in here, as you can see, as soon as I started to highlight something, if you guys look over to the right-hand side of this uh, document, you notice how there's a little tiny like little speaker thing that you showed up? Way over here. You used to have to make all your comments up in this portion. All right? Set your notifications, add comments to it, and so forth, and they would show up on the right-hand side. These new ones uh, can actually be done right next to the paragraph in question. So if I had something in here and particularly highlighted, you know, let's say, teachers, Clicked on that. Right, whoops, sorry. Um, hit the 
comment on it, it's actually there. Now this comment, all right, that's actually there available for a person, they can see exactly what I related it to. Now I, I could actually, if I just click over here, like say that I'm up in this one, and see how this, it'll actually go for the entire paragraph. So you can be more specific with it if you want to. Now uh, let's just say that I've done this, and uh, I'm sharing it with Jack, all right? And he's gone through and he sees what I'm, my comment is. Jack actually has the option, all right, since we're sharing this and he has editing powers over it, once, it's, once he's answered this, he can actually resolve this, all right? Or he can go up, all right, and put a link to the comment, delete, all right, um, edit the comment, all right? Or the resolve one is basically he clicks on it, he's made that change. He's basically saying, yeah, Dan, I saw what you're talking about. I've made the change. You know, or if he wants to, he can come back over top of it and put another comment next to it going, what are you talking about? It looks fine. You know, something along that line. And I could go back through it and go, yep, you are right. And boom, 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 I can resolve those ones. So you can have as many of these things on here as you actually want. There are certain ones uh, that you can actually use that will actually allow you to uh, put comments in audibly. So that it's a, just a different kind of feature. But basically what they've done with comments is they've taken and changed where they're actually uh, located at and how you can get rid of them. And it keeps track of all of them. Every time somebody resolves an issue, it actually registers that in the larger comment category. So as I was saying, you can go to the comment one and you get these guys, all right? Or you can go to this comment, and you get a guy that looks like this. All right? As I said, when they're actually resolved, all right, they will actually pop up into this larger comment area. And it's pretty easy going. Now, this one is actually pretty much underused. And I personally didn't notice this stuff really was there because I didn't pay attention to it for a long time. And I was like, Oh my God, why in the world am I keep reinventing stuff? Somebody else has got something cool out there that I could probably use. All right, you can borrow and create templates all right, in the drive and actually save the templates uh, for others to use. And I don't mean like as in you need to share it with somebody in particular, but you can actually upload the thing. All right, as you actually go to the, uh, you know, one of these icons is like any particular document that you're in, all right, say that you're in um, a Google Doc or a spreadsheet or a slide, if you've set up like a really cool slide uh, show, all right, and the whole transition, the, the whole nine yards is all really cool, and you think that it might benefit somebody if they're going to make one, if you click on the guy, all right, it will actually take you, all right, it takes you to this thing right here, which Mind you, I had to shrink it down a little bit to put it on the screen. Inside it is called the uh, template gallery, and you can move up and down inside the gallery looking at different things. Of course, most of the time when anybody actually clicks on this guy, they'll click on the blank one. All right, But there are far more uh, ones off to the side. If you click on the arrow one, it will actually take you into an area that actually has National Trail schools. So anybody that's actually uploaded one will actually be there. So you, uh, if you create a really cool one, a brochure or um, a newsletter or something like that, and you want somebody else to add to it, you just upload it into here, and then anybody inside National Trail can actually go and get it, which means it's also kind of protected because it's still inside our school. I think that if you actually, there's, um, the list is not as extensive as I'd like. Yeah, because there's, you know, adding more of them to it. But I think you might be able to, I just haven't actually gone, gone completely into it. Because it's, uh, it. To me, it's still kind of new, but I thought it was still pretty interesting stuff.
Now, a document outline is something that has actually been there, all right, but most of the time it's not actually used. Whenever you create a document, all right, you, know, you can actually, it allows you uh, quicker access to different areas inside the document. It's almost like making a uh, level of hyperlinks or a table of contents uh, to the left side of a document so that if you have a really involved document that has several different pieces of information, let's just say that you are doing an entire unit on a particular topic, but there are subcategories inside that that you want to be able to come back to and say, okay, look at this part or look at that part. Um, it gives somebody a, a, a quicker look at stuff without having to actually scroll up and down inside of a document. This one's kind of easy because usually when you start typing in a Google Doc, the first thing you actually have is what's called normal text. All right, Inside that one, you can actually switch to a host of other ones, such as title, subtitle, headings, and so forth. Every time you go and pick a different one outside of normal text, it will actually indicate um, a new area in your outline. <coughs> so. It's uh, you know, great for like technical writing for uh, books and chapters, all right, even uh, detailed documents. So that, you know, a student can actually use it as well, um, organizing their thoughts. I mean, they could create it in an outline and then later on get rid of it. Let's just say that they, they know they have to be able to speak about several different items inside, say, a rough draft. They can actually do this, all right, in the rough draft category, all right, and then once they're done, actually eliminate the stuff when they move it over to another, you know, to the final draft in order to, you know, make sure that they're keeping their things straight. Well, that's actually pretty much it. There's a lot of other things that are actually available, you know, that you can actually add to this. It's um, a few, uh, I'll say this, the, the one thing, you know, there's loads of that are out there are apps and extensions that only scratch the surface. There's one that I'm doing later, and I kind of wasn't going to add it on this, but it's called Read Write, which actually works really well in all the documents. Uh, it's kind of geared towards emerging learners, uh, but it's a tool that you can actually use for you know a lot of uh, a lot of different students, and it, it's an extension through Chrome. I would say most likely then if it's actually going away, it might actually appear like a uh, something going to the actual document. That would be uh, I would say that would be nice if it, yeah, if it went in there. 